Hi, good afternoon everyone. Uh, my name is Pritam Singh. I'm 34 years old. Uh, I've been running a commentary syndicate called Opinion Asia for the last five years. And as Kevin mentioned, I am just about finished with my Juris Doctor program at SMU. Uh, I hope to be called to the bar very soon, and I certainly look forward to practice as a lawyer. Uh, now, about 10 years ago, I climbed up this long flight of staircase, uh, staircases at the old Workers' Party headquarters in Jalan Besar. I'm not sure how many of you remember it. Um, and that's when I met Mr. Lau for the first time. And at that point, I decided that I was probably a little too young for party politics and decided that I should get some experience in the working world first. Uh, I finally joined the Workers' Party in uh, May of last year and almost immediately involved in house visits, selling the party newsletter, The Hammer. And uh, shortly thereafter, in August last year, I was elected to the Workers' Party Youth Wing. Now, why have I thrown my hat into the political ring? You see, I believe that Singaporeans uh, should spend some part of their life in public service, whether you're male or female. And if we accept that the average lifespan of a Singaporean is about 80 years old, it's about 80 years, I beg your pardon, then I think 10, 15, 20 years in public service is reflective of a life lived to the fullest, where you can change the status quo for the better and look forward to a more progressive society. Now then this of course begs the question, why public service in the opposition cause? Now, in the 1990s, I remember uh, then Prime Minister, now Senior Minister Go Chok Tong, imploring young people to join the PAP, uh, to change the system from the inside. Now, two or three elections have gone by, and I'm not sure about the rest of you, but I don't see the system changing from the inside. If anything, I think the system has become even more entrenched. And from 2006 in particular, if we look at what has happened in Singapore, to the lower income, to the middle income, and just the changes that we have seen in Singapore society, I think some of these changes have been incredibly profound and have serious long-term implications for Singapore. Let me read out to you one blogger's comments, which I read on the 13th of April, uh, just a few weeks ago. Uh, this lady, uh, in 2004, left to go to Australia to complete her degree in communication design. And uh, she came back in 2006. And then in 2011, a few weeks ago, she writes about the changes that she had seen over the last five years. And it's a, it's a good sort of period to reflect on because that's when the people gave the PDB a mandate. And this is what she said. Just bear with me. It's not too long. In the last five years, I've watched and felt my country change from a familiar friend to a stranger that I very recognize. It's the fastest, slowest change you can imagine feeling. Almost overnight, ERP systems sprung into place to prevent road congestion while I was stuck in jams in raised priced taxis. Suddenly, the faces of Singapore no longer spoke the same English language. I had problems ordering food and drinks in local dining places. And all too soon, I had to let four trains at two minute intervals pass me before I was finally able to physically shove myself into one <coughs> to get home for dinner at 8 p.m. Of course, this hasn't happened overnight. This has been a growing problem over the last five years. And I hate to break it to you, but five years is a very brief time for such major developments in a small nation like Singapore. I hate what has happened to my country. It doesn't feel like my country anymore. It feels like a temporary island of wild government experiments to see perhaps how many people can fit into one tiny dot before it sinks, or how much money you can make per square foot. Strange policies of home ownership and citizenship have been adopted, rewritten, reinforced all over this span of five years. And inevitably, and obviously, it all comes down to our single party ruling system in Singapore. The regime of the PAP has controlled parliament since 1959. This means no one else has had a crack at it. I don't know about you. 
but this doesn't feel like democracy to me. Hence, I believe that it is vital we have an insurance in the form of a credible opposition presence in Parliament. One that, is, one that makes sure that the PAP are acting in the national interest. And one that scrutinizes PAP intentions before policies are unleashed on the public. And in my opinion, never has the need for us to move to a first world parliament ever been so urgent. Thank you very much.